Well, welcome everybody to a special episode of The Biz. My name is Eric Palmer. Thanks for joining us. In today's episode, I want to talk about technology. Where have we been and where are we going? And with me to discuss this topic is Jim Harkinsey, the president and COO of Fidelity Life Association. Jim, welcome to the show. Now, what we want to address today is the technology that's driven the marketplace here, especially recently. What have we done in the ways of innovation for the life insurance marketplace and a little bit in the annuity space as well? So what I want to do, Jim, is first, let's talk about Fidelity specifically because we, you know, we hear a lot of terminology, simplified issue, uh, digital applications, but really Fidelity is a leader in this marketplace. You went from zero to $54 million of annual life premium out of nowhere, solely built on technology. So walk us through how you built that and why. Sure, well, we, we, we are, Fidelity was a mutual company that was part of the Zurich Group and uh, got spun out when the Zurich companies, the life companies, were sold to uh, Bank One. <clears throat> and the board of directors of Fidelity at that point had a choice to make. They said, we're either going to merge you guys into another mutual or we want you to create something that actually can make a difference in this country. Uh, the, the, the country doesn't need another small mutual. Right, and right. so. We sat back and the strategy we came up with was to try to be the company that attacked that, the problem of the underserved middle market. Right. And our view was the way we we're going to get to them is we have to do something different because, because they're not being served today. Right. And so what we did was we decided we're going to leverage technology, we're going to leverage new kinds of information that are emerging, and we're going to leverage new ways of out of the box underwriting and thinking to try to develop innovative products to try to sell with the real key goal for us being that people could get protection products, life insurance, valuable life insurance protection products right on the spot that they're making a phone call. Right. That's what we wanted people to get served right away and that was the goal. And so we built all the technology around that from the ability to be able to grab the databases and, uh, and connect to the black box underwriting to right. get the analysis of the databases, to do the underwriting, get the underwriters actually on board when the call is going on, get the electronic signature. We built all of it to be able to actually bring everything right to the point of sale and make the sale. Now we've seen this, you know, the analytics don't lie. People are going online, specifically this middle market. And what's interesting, it's almost like a sort of an awkward hourglass shape. This, the widest bandwidth being the underserved middle market. It's the largest opportunity out there, but how do we reach them? They go online, they originate on the internet, and they want the quick, easy, painless flow of, 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 of obtaining whatever product and service it is. So you guys have done an excellent job doing that. Let's start talking specifically about the underwriting, because I think that simplified issue underwriting is kind of a common uh, phrase in our industry, but it really kind of starts in, in a specific direction, utilizing these services online. So walk us through this black box underwriting. It's not just an MIB check. W what else is involved? No, it's, it also get, it gets the pharmaceutical database, right. which basically will try to check the person's answers against does it match up with the medications that they're on. Right. So it does that kind of it, it, it does that kind of analysis just to make sure it's spot checking are they being honest. Right. And then what'll happen is I mean there is a point at which if if there's if there's disconnects there the underwriter will get on the phone try to get an explanation. Um, so it takes that kind of database analysis uh, and, and then it, it it also connection to a black box underwriter also has the drop down questions going on. So if you're asking questions of, uh, of, of a customer and they're giving certain answers, the, 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 our technology will actually reach into the black box underwriting technology and it'll pop up the other questions to be asking so it goes through and gets the full. So if the client's indicating I've got diabetes or heart stroke in the last five to ten years, it knows to serve up some sub questions. That's exactly right. Yeah. So I think that's a huge problem that we face in this industry is that quite often as advisors, field underwriting is sort of a lost art. Nobody, nobody's mastered field underwriting anymore. So you go out there and your client says, you know, I had cancer 10 years ago. It's deer in the headlights. What do I ask next? What's the appropriate question? So you've really used this technology and all the analytics over the years to say, well, this is what we need to ask next based on the answer to this that question. That is exactly right, yep. And so you get business that's in good order. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's exactly right. And another key for those agents that know, don't uh, recognize in good order, really at the end of the day is the most complete the application can be, the faster the insurance company is going to process it, get it through underwriting and out the door as, a, as an issued policy. So really having the full complete data up front saves weeks and weeks of underwriting time in any situation. It does, yeah. Now let's talk about the application. So we've simplified this underwriting process. We've got a smoother way to underwrite. We're not stabbing people in the arms necessarily anymore uh, uh, for the full simplified issue. There's some quasi uh, mix, a little bit of med, but no APS records. So you've done a lot in the underwriting side. Let's talk about the apps. 
We started in this business getting into fillable PDF files, and we thought we conquered the world. And then the next step was the smart application process, kind of what you described there, right? Where we answer the question, it serves up another question. Fidelity took it to another level. You're on a single application platform. Tell us about this and, and why you're moving towards this, this ideal. Yeah, we're moving toward a common application platform where every product that we have now will have the same, uses the same application. It's, fi it's filed the same application. As a matter of fact, with the platform we're building, we'll ultimately have other carriers joining us using the same app uh, common application. And the reason for this is for when somebody has someone on the phone, and they're working through the process. Not only do we get the feedback of the deeper questions to ask, but there's a point at which, if the, based on the answers, the, 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 the uh, agent and the customer may realize, wow, this is not the right product for you, either because of health or other reasons. We've got to right. get you to another product. Right. With our common application, the agent will be able to move right into the next product without having to refill anything. It just continues on. And so therefore, the, the entire portfolio of products that we have, from an impaired risk product to the simplified issue, to even our hybrid life medical product, right. which gets it placed right away, and then you get the medical later, right. all of them will work off the same application. Well, that's fantastic. One of the things, you know, we've, as a wholesale brokerage, we, we've been processing, processing applications for years and years, and to the tune of thousands of applications a month. And one of the things that we find all too often is that when we get approved other than applied for, or we find out that the product isn't right for the client, to go back out, set a new appointment, get your client's time first and foremost, which is, is a hard thing to do to begin with in this business, and then fill out all new paperwork, sometimes we lose the client altogether. So that single app uh, uh, concept I'm, I'm, I'm falling in love with here, Jim, because at the end of the day, it's not just simplifying the process for the agent and the insurance company, but for the consumer. They don't have to go through the burden of paperwork and signatures, which as a society today, we're all moving away from reading and writing and, and, and doing anything that takes a little bit too much time. So. The simplification should help everybody involved. It should, Eric. I mean, the, the, thing, that, the thing that we learned in working with, the, and we have call centers around the country that do business with us. That's why we've gone from, we, were, we had basically no business, new business in 2006. Starting in 2007, we're up to 54 million. And so far in 2014, we had almost $17 million in the first quarter. So we, we'll get close to 70 million for this year. It, it's just pouring in. We can't stop it. And the, probably the biggest thing that we learned from these call centers, from these producers that were on the phone. It's not just call centers, it's producers that are on the phone with right. customers. Right. I say call centers, but it really is anybody who's doing business over the phone. What they've really, the thing that we've learned is that we, there's not a, the sales to the middle market, it's not a lack of interest in people going on the internet. You have millions of people searching. Right. It's that these people don't get served when they're ready to buy something. Right. And what the, and what the agents have told us is that the insurance is an emotional purchase, and you've got to get the product in their hand the day they decided to, they wanted to make that purchase. Absolutely. They woke up and decided they're going to make a call, they're going to do this. Right. Everything you do, do that delays that gives that the person a chance to get away from that emotion and walk away. Well, that's so everything we're built around is get the product, the right product for that person placed right then. I think that's applicable to any type of sales. If, I, if I'm ready to buy, sell it to me now. Don't yeah. make me wait. And the longer you make me wait, I'm going to think myself right out of the transaction. And I think we see that in our industry altogether. Our placement ratios are down as an industry. The overall insurance uh, purchasing uh, habits have changed since 1980, probably a lot due to the fact that we've made it um, difficult to obtain these products. And when I'm ready to spend my money and go for it, I want it right now. So I love the idea that we're getting better and better at delivering this stuff almost in real time. Now, Jim, one of the things you said that, that strikes me, uh, and I want to point it back out here, is that over the phone sales, and we're not just talking about large call centers, independent insurance agents sitting in their home offices or, the, or their branch offices, pounding the phones, making connections from clients over the phone, and actually never leaving their office to make sales. That's, that's becoming quite popular, and that's really the backbone of Fidelity. That, that's what, that, those are the people that we deal with. That's the backbone of our business. That's who we do business with. As a matter of fact, we have a part of our organization called the Lead Republic where we'll actually even feed the leads to people. So Fidelity actually has, has gone out and purchased uh, a, a company called Lead Republic. You're, you're providing access to the leads. They're, they're originated online, if yep, I'm not mistaken. They so they're quote request type leads. And again, another opportunity to, to work with a company that's leading uh, not just the technology on the application and the underwriting, but also giving you new prospects and connecting with the people that want to, to be sold in this capacity. Yeah. Now we get out, asked the question quite often, how hard is it to just change my practice and go over the phone? 
Now, I'm going to say it's very easy, but I started my practice over the phone, so I understand I, I kind of lived that process. But how hard have, has it been from the agents that you've seen, the, the, the guys that have been in the business 20, 30 years, to make the transition from going to appointment to appointment to, to, to never leaving their desk and sitting there and hitting the phone? Yeah, I mean, you know, what they tell me is it's a closer's dream. You know, they, they put in the, they, they, the, people can actually tell us the kind of leads they want. They want this number of leads with this kind of demographic at this cost. They get them and they can sit and close. They don't have to do the prospecting themselves. That's, that's really fantastic. Now, I'm going to ask the question that, that's typically on everybody's mind when we talk about technology, and, and this is the hard-hitting one. So insurance companies today, they're leveraging all this technology. They're generating their own consumer leads. Are they cutting us independent agents out of the business? Jim, what's your take on this? Well, that's never going to happen because people are always, number one, going to need an agent. Even, even agentless sales. This is an area we're headed down because we are building websites that could do agentless sales. But the way we're going to be using it is going to be in partnership with agents so that they can build the traffic to the site if they want right. to create what we call an agentless sale, which means the customer has the ability to buy without an agent but most of the time, you're going to need a telephone number there because at some point along there, they're going to want something explained. You always have to have an agent involved. Absolutely, and that's refreshing to hear because at the end of the day, again, there's, there, there's the thought that are we going to be cut out, but I absolutely agree with Jim. You can't really cut us out because at the end of the day, there's got to be somebody there to answer the questions in real time and that human contact, you know the feeling that you get when you call your cell phone company and you're speaking to the computer and you're trying to, to yeah. interact with the phone, people don't like that. We still want to know there's a human being involved. When can we expect to see this, this agent online portal? Do you have a kind of a timeline that you expect to deliver this to the market? We, we, we will be, we are actually launching this in the second quarter of this year. We always test things first before we subject any right. agents to doing this. Right. But we, we will test it ourselves, and so I would say as we get into the second half of the year, we'll look to make this available to people that believe, hey, I think I could be good at generating leads to a website like this. That's fantastic. Well, again, uh, uh, technology is truly, truly driving this marketplace. If you are not using technology, if you are not trying these simplified issue processes, I urge you to do so. At the end of the day, those efficiencies are going to allow you to reach more people, create more sales, and grow your practice. Jim, thanks so much for being on the show. We truly, truly appreciate it. If anybody wants more information on, A, how to work with Fidelity, or you just want to find out some more about the products and some of the technologies we're talking about, write me right here. It's info at thebiz.tv. Of course, you can call us. It's 800 290-7226, hit extension 160, and our simplified issue experts will be ready to field the call. Thanks again so much for spending the time with us. We look forward to seeing you next time.